The next module we like to talk about is the dynamic authentication. Dynamic authentication is a little bit different than the identity system user based authentication, but it is as well a little bit similar. The similar part is that we use typically system users to assign them to identities. That could be other objects as well, but system users will be much more often assigned than other objects. The system user assignment happens not like in the first one where we assign them to the identity, please remember. We do that this time with the help of XML and we assign it to the application. That means you need a dynamic authenticator. All the time is there dynamic somewhere in the name of the authenticator. This is one that uses that XML. And if you use that dynamic authenticator, then the authenticator will look at the application level. That means at the program level, for example, for the manager dialog, just for a specific configured system user. In difference to the first one, again, we are able to use conditions. That means I can say all people with a VIP flag gets a specific system user assigned, for example. It is not a system user assignment like an account assignment. Remember, it is like a role assignment. This system user will deliver the permission situation for that specific identity. I can have as many conditions as I like to. I have only to ensure that uh, not two conditions get back the same users because the first condition that works well will then at the end assign the application. And I can have as well something like a fallback assignment. That means if no condition it's true, then the, the person gets a specific permission situation or not. In this example, I like to show you the Active Directory user account dynamic. That means we want to deal with XML. So to do that, first thing I have to do, I have to enable that Active Directory user account dynamic. Here we are, it is activated. With that, the next step is to figure out where I have to configure the XML. As I can see here on the initial data field, a product is assigned, which is the manager. And what I have to know is that if I want to change the XML, I have to do it on the product level. So I jump to programs, here we are. I select my manager, here we are. And there is something that is named the configuration data. I select the configuration data. And as you can see, there's a small XML and just adding some more XML, I define now a user mapping, which maps for each user the dialogue to a VI help desk, perfect. I just save the whole thing, I commit it to the database. And once it is configured, I can directly sign in. Therefore, I use the manager. I make a new connection. Here we are. I switch to Active Directory account dynamic. Here we are. It is a single sign on. So I have only to sign in. And what you can see, there is nearly no dialogue. There is just the help desk dialogue. Here we are. With that help desk dialogue, I can only manage tickets or whatever I like to do here, but nothing other else. Person is missing, for example, IT shop is missing and so on and so on. It is just for help desk users. Excellent. I can as well see Hervik is assigned. Here we are. Hervik gets assigned here the system user VI help desk as expected. And that is exactly what I think that should happen. Now let's expand that a little bit. Therefore, I just step back into my designer. Remember, XML gets configured on the program level. We selected the manager. I just go into that XML. And here I want now to do my modifications. Therefore, I just take here the other example and copy the other example into my XML file. Here we are. As you easily can see, we just like to map the system user Hervik to the record of Hervik, which the condition says, the UID of the site in person and the central account have to be Hervik Abele. That means only if I am signed in as Hervik, I will get at the end this specific condition. True. If not, I will get then the VI help desk dialogue assigned. To show you that, I just click save. I commit the whole thing to the database. Here we are. And I step into my manager, I close the database connection and I create a new database connection. This time I select just an other authenticator because a single sign on will only work with a signed in account here on my machine. I use employee dynamic. We can do that because as you have seen, the XML is configured on the program level and not on the authenticator level. So that means every dynamic authenticator is using the same XML. 
And now I can type in here a specific user account as login information. I will use Hervic like before. I say connect and there should be no changes. We see here all of the menu items, perfect. Now I'm stepping to the employee objects. I take just one other object. Remember only Hervic gets the Hervic account. All the others gets at the end then the help desk system user assigned. I copy the central user account. I close the connection. I create a new connection. This time I use the other user. Here we are. I connect to the connection. And as you easily can see, it is the help dex because the identity we choose was not perfect. And with that, we have as well seen the XML configuration and can move forward with something different. All what you need to know about authentication modules exists as well in the standard manual. This is the configuration manual of the One Identity Manager. Here we are. There's a section about authentication modules and all of them are described here in that specific section. We are talking about dynamic modules and if you want to know something about more of them, then you have to step to the next chapter. And this chapter then tells you something about how to configure these authentication modules best. Here are some properties first you can learn from and configuration parameters. And here is as well the section where you can find these XML snippets I'm using. To show you a little bit what is possible in dynamic authenticators, here are two samples just from the manual talking about how to assign a system user to everybody. That is what we showed before and how to do it with the condition. That was the second part of the example. But in addition to these dialog user detect things exists as well something that is called a function group mapping. And the function group mapping works uh, like the following. You can define two views. One view maps people to a function and the second functional mapping here maps the function to some permission groups and with that the people are authentified. This function group mapping, it's not very often used in the meantime. The reason for it is it is very similar to the application roles you can as well use in the identity manager. And from our perspective as well, the application roles should be the preferred way to map things. This view based thing here, it's cool. It is an old one. It was developed before we started with application roles. It will work, but it is more to maintain. It is easier to assign an application role to a person than to edit to views just to change the permission situation of people.